Welcome back into the Tell Me Teaching Series as we continue to teach through the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John, and we've been looking at verses 1, chapter 1, verse 6, 7, and 8, 6, 7, and 8, these verses in chapter 1, so let's go right back there to where we left off in our last session, and we'll be reading out of the American Standard Version of the Bible, depending on what version you may have, it may in fact be different. So let's look at this together in John chapter 1, verse 6. 7 and 8. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. And this has been our foundational text right here, verse 8. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to focus in on this section here in verse 8. Because he says, he was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. Now, John the, the, the Baptist's mission, his mission was not to exalt himself, but to be a witness about the Messiah. Now, this is crucial. I know it's a simple statement. I understand that, of course. But if it was so simple and so easy to understand, why is it so many of us in quote unquote ministry and in pulpits, okay, spend most of our time exalting ourselves instead of exalting the coming of the Messiah, the light. So it, perhaps it's not so simple. So I want to draw your attention to this. Go back and look at this text. I want it to be burned inside your mind when he says, he was not the light, John 1, 8, but he came to testify about the light. Now, to testify by the light, he is the first, and I want you to see this because this is crucial. He is the first of eight witnesses that is registered in the book of John, in the Gospel of John, okay, that appear in John's Gospel. John the Baptist is the first of eight major witnesses with regard to testifying about the light Jesus Christ. Now, I want to ask you to draw your attention. Uh, I want to draw your attention and ask you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 5. Let's go to John chapter 5. And I want you to see this in verse 37. Verse 37. The next major witness that we have after John the Baptist, okay, is that of the Father, the Heavenly Father. Look at what it says. Look what Jesus says about his father as being a witness testifying about Jesus himself. John chapter 5 verse 37 says, And the father who sent me, he has, he, capital H, that means he, God, has testified about me, of me, and you have, ne and you have neither heard of his voice, look at this, at any time, nor seen his form. He says, none of you have heard the voice of God nor seen a form of God. And yet God testifies about me. The second major thing that we see is Jesus' words himself. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 8, verse 18. In John chapter 8, verse 18, it says, I am he who testifies about myself. Do you realize that nobody else can do that? Only Jesus can give a testimony of himself. And he says, I am he who testifies about myself, and the Father who sends me testifies about me. Again, Jesus testifies about himself and acknowledges that the Heavenly Father is testifying about him, other than John the Baptist. Well, what about the works? What about the works? Look at this. Now turn your Bibles, go back to John chapter 5. And look at this in verse 36, verse 36, in John chapter 5, verse 36. I want you to see this with me, because he says, But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of John. Who is speaking? Well, obviously we know that this is Jesus. He says, But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of John. And his testimony was great. For the works which the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I do, testify about me that the Father has sent me. So now the works of Jesus themselves testifies to the light of Jesus himself. Well, we also see this in John chapter 10. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 10. Look what he says in verse 25. In John chapter 10, verse 25, he says, 
Jesus answered him, I told you, this is Jesus, he says, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. Now, why would he make such a statement? Well, because nobody else's works were preordained by God, commissioned by God in a divinely way that would always point toward the Father. Now, remember this. Always remember the simple rule, okay? It's a simple precept. It's not complicated, and yet it's violated all the time. The Holy Spirit always testifies to the Son, Jesus, and Jesus always testifies to God the Father. Now, Jesus never drew attention to himself. The Holy Spirit doesn't draw attention to himself, but he's always pointing to a higher, to a higher rank or a higher authority, which would be God the Heavenly Father. Now, that should be our job, pointing upwards to our higher authority, and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the Old Testament also gave testimony to the script. The Old Testament scriptures also gave testimony to the person of Jesus, to the light. Remember, when he said in John 1 8, he says, He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. That's our foundational text here. Well, let me ask you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 5, verse 39. And in the Gospel of John chapter 5, verse 39, look at this who is giving testimony to him. He says, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me. So Jesus is speaking to them in the Gospel of John, right? With reference to what? With reference to the Old Testament scriptures, because at the time of John, that's what they were preaching the Old Testament, right? And he says, so you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It, it is these that testify about me. So the Old Testament scriptures testify about Jesus. Now, some of the people who met Jesus testify about him. Some of the people who met Jesus testify about him. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 4, one chapter back. Go to John chapter 4, look at verse 29. Verse 29, he says, come, see a man who told me all the things that I have done, this is not the Christ, is it? This is not the Christ, is it? She understood this. Well, even the disciples testify about him. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 15, verse 27. John chapter 15, verse 27 says this. He says, And you will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. Now, it's pretty amazing to me that, that the disciples who walked with Jesus understood they had to testify about him. Somehow, somewhere along the line, we've kind of just forgotten about that. It's just kind of just skipped our mind that that's what we're here for. But we spend all the time testifying about ourselves, trying to impress everybody. Listen, in the same book of John, John chapter 19, in John chapter 19, verse 35, it says this, and he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may, he says, so that you also may believe. Again, these are the disciples testifying to the light. Well, in John chapter 21, turn your Bibles to John chapter 21. Look at what he says in verse 24. He says, this is the disciple who was testifying to these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true. You know, our jobs, the roles that we play as preachers and teachers of the gospel and the full counsel of the word of God, as evangelists, as pastors, okay, um, is that our job is always to testify to the light. But we spend way too much time on ourselves, in our, our ministries, in, our, in the name of our church, in the name of our organization, in the name of our movement. It's just absolutely crazy. We spend so much time promoting ourselves. Go back. In John chapter 1, verse 8. And he was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. Well, let's look at this term. What does it mean to be a witness? What does it mean to testify, right? Well, the legal terms for witness, okay, in case you don't know it, in the Greek language, this term for witness, the legal term, is, is marturia, marturia, in the Greek language. 
and it and it means and it comes and the word testify okay is from manureo manureo okay now these are the two words that are related to the fact not an opinion as in a courtroom as in a courtroom setting so to be a witness to testify has nothing to do with your i think i feel i opine this is my opinion no it has nothing to do with it it has to do with facts just the facts that's all that's what it deals with so when we put this word together my uh, witness okay or maturia okay or manureo which is means to testify okay it's talking about it's, it's it's being used like in the legal sense in a courtroom hmm? and that is a way to get to the facts just to the fact now the terms are used predominantly in the new testament by the apostle john now the evangelist John, the apostle John, he's the one who pray, who's the who's the, who, the one who uses the term the most. Look, seventy-seven times out of one hundred and thirteen occurrences in the Gospel of John, or the epistles, or in the Revelation. Now this is in all the writings of John the apostle. So this is where this word predominantly appears. Hmm? John is properly called the Baptist. Now we'll go back to John the Baptist, okay? Why? Because he was sent by God to baptize repentant sinners in preparation for the Messiah's coming. Look, let me show you this. We're in John chapter 1 verse 8. Drop all the way down to verse 31. Go all the way from verse 8 down to verse 31. Look at verse 31. He says, I did not recognize him. This is him speaking. But so he might be manifested to Israel I came baptizing in water. Now, yet the purpose of all that he did, John the Baptist, it was to bear witness to Jesus. Everything that John the Baptist did was always pointing toward Jesus. That's what he was doing. He was always pointing to Jesus, always. That's our job. Why is that so difficult to comprehend? Why is that so difficult to undertake? Why is that so difficult to understand? Look, in John chapter 1, look at this very carefully in verse 7. Look, John the Baptist understood that he was not the object of faith. But what he understood was that he was the agent of faith. In other words, he would be the vehicle that would draw people to Christ, to the cross, to believe. That's what you and I are. But you and I, what happens in this world is that we allow people to exalt us, to lift us up, you know, on some kind of pedestal. Shame on us. In John 1, 7, he says, he came as a witness, John 1, 7, he came as a witness to testify about the light. So what? So that all might believe through him. We are merely agents, vehicles by which God works through. In verse 15, in John 1, 15, he says this. John testified about him and he cried out saying, This was of him, this was he of whom... I said, he who comes after me has a higher rank, has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. I mean, who, who are you? Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? <coughs> I am John Nobody. I am Eddie Nobody. I'm just nobody. Who do we really think we are? I mean, we have so self-exalted ourselves. Look at what I'm doing. Look at my ministry. Look at what... That's pure nonsense. In the same book, in John chapter 1, look what he says in verse 23. He said, I am a voice of the one crying in the wilderness. That's it. I'm just a voice. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. I'm just the voice. I'm not the authority of that voice. 
I'm not the authoritative voice. I'm a voice. Look at John chapter 1, verse 29. John 1, 29 says, And the next day he saw Jesus coming to him and he said, and he acknowledged him. He acknowledged him. It's what he did. He saw him coming, right? And he pointed to him. Look at this. He said, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He didn't say, Behold, voila, here I am. I'm the one who takes away the sin of the world. No. Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? Nobody. Nobody. Look at this. And in John chapter 1, verse 32, John testifies saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. You remember when Jesus got baptized, okay? And when Jesus got baptized, you remember that he, God the Father spoke to me. He said, this is my son whom I am well pleased. And he saw the dove, emblematic, symbolic of the Holy Spirit descending upon the one that is Jesus. That is Jesus. Look at this in John chapter 1, verse 34. In John chapter 1, verse 34, look what he says. He says, I myself have seen and I have testified that this is the Son of God. Notice John the Baptist, who had the greatest ministry of all, the most privileged ministry of all. This is John the Baptist. Okay? And he says, I am pointing toward Jesus. Again, who do you think you are? Well, who do I think I am? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. Look at this. In John chapter 1, verse 36. Look at verse 36. Says, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. It was a consistent, persistent, okay, regular pattern to point toward Jesus. That's what he was doing, pointing toward Jesus. And then look at John chapter 5, verse 33. In John chapter 5, verse 33, he says, You have sent John, and he testified to the truth. We, we, are, we have become so self-embroiled. Uh, we, 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 you know, many of us in the ministry, we're conceited. We think we're so, we've become so self-important. We're self-exalted. We just promote our ministry, and it's all about me. You know, you're a fool. You're a fool because John the Baptist, who had the greatest ministry of all, Okay, the great minister, you know, look, look what he says in John 5 33. John 5 33 says, You have sent John and he has testified to the truth. Well, let me ask you a question What's your version of truth? What truth are you testifying to? Oh, look at me. Go, look, 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 here's the truth. Look how God is using me. You idiot. You know, we got all kinds of parallel truths out there. All these, you know, they're on, they're on this on all these different tracks in a parallel form, okay, going in the same direction, okay. But let me tell you something: it's not the truth. Look, in verse thirty-six, in John chapter five, he says, "But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of John." <coughs> Excuse me. This is Jesus. And let me tell you something. At no time does John the Apostle, John the Evangelist, who's the author of the Gospel of John, right? Nor Jesus, neither one of them ever, not one time do you find the scripture where they humiliate, where they, bel where they belittle uh, John the Baptist. At no time do you see that. Never, never, never see that. But at the same time, they've always exalted the truth. John, the Baptist ministry, was a great ministry. He is our model. And yet, both John the Apostle, the evangelist, right, and Jesus always placed him in his proper place, like we should be placed in our proper place. Because in verse 36, Jesus says, John chapter 5, But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of John, for the works which the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I do, 
testify about me that the Father has sent me. Now, we got to admit that John the Baptist, a man sent from God, right? Isn't that what he says? Isn't that, isn't that what he says in John, in John chapter 1, verse 6? There came a man sent from God whose name was John, John the Baptist. So was Jesus. So was Jesus. Now, which one was greater? J Jesus, of course. Look, in verse 7, in John 1, 7, it says, he came, to, he came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him, through John the Baptist, to the truth that he was pointing to. You know, people believe in Christ, okay? They do. Through the testimony of witnesses just like John. You know, preacher, that's why you and I preach the gospel. We're not the object of faith. We may be the agents, the vehicle that God uses to point people to the light to Jesus. Look, in this, in this same book that we're reading here, in John chapter 1, look what he says in verse uh, 12. Look at verse 12. But as many received him, to them he gave the right. Look at this. But as many as received them, to them he gave the right. Look at this. He says, to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Our job is to point to the light. Go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And in John chapter 3, look at this in verse 18. Verse 18. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jump with me to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Now remember, our whole foundational text here is John 1 8, right? Which one, right? When he says, He was not the light, but he came to testify about, about the light. Mm -hmm. This is our foundational text. But go with me to John 6 29. John 6 29. You know, you would think that this would be obvious to all of us as preachers and teachers of the Word of God, who, whether we're, whether we're pastors or just itinerant preachers or we're evangelists, okay? You know, the three of us have got major roles to play. Okay? But we kind of forget that we're not all that important. In John 6, 29, he says, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God. I think sometimes we kind of forget that. He says, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. He sent John the Baptist. He sent Jesus. He sends a lot of us. Okay? He sends a whole lot of us to go out and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what they are? They are agents. They are agents of belief, if I can put it in those terms, okay? But Christ is the object of belief. You would think this is kind of simple. Perhaps it's not so simple because we live in such a self-absorbed, self-important ministerial uh, time in the life of the church. What a shame that is. Look, salvation then, as all times, was a matter of faith, okay, in God and what he said, not the preacher. Now, let me show you this. Go to the book of Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. And go with me to Romans chapter 4. And I want you to see this with me in Romans chapter 4, okay? And let's, let's see this. And, and look, this is a long section. But it's really crucial that you get this, that you see this, okay? Um, in Romans chapter 4, in, uh, in fact, let's, let's start with verse 1. And let's work our way down. Let's just work our way down. Romans chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. Verses, Romans chapter 4, 1 through 16. What then shall we say? That Abraham, our forefather, according, he says, according to the flesh, has found. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Hmm. It's a lot of us. For what does the scripture say? 
Abraham, underscore this word, believed, underscore, he believed God. That's what we have to drive people to. We have to point them to believing in God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Look at verse 4. Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as favor, but as what is due. But, verse 5, but to the one who does not work, but what? But believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. Everything is about believing in God. We're pointing everybody to God. Just as David also spoke, speaks of the blessings on the, uh, on the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Look at verse 9. He said, it, it is this blessing then on the circumcised or on the uncircumcised also. He says, no. For we say faith. Faith was credited to Abraham's righteousness. He believed. How then was it credited? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised, it becomes a question. He says, not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness. He goes, of the what? Of the faith which he had while uncircumcised. You see, this is how an unbeliever becomes a believer, right? He says, so that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised, that righteousness might be credited to them. Look at verse 12. And the father of circumcision to those who, do, who, not, only, who not only are of the circumcision, but also follow in the steps of faith of our father Abraham, which he had while uncircumcised. Look at verse 13. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would be heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness of what? Of faith. It's about faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise is nullified. For the law brings about wrath. But where there is no law, there is also no violation. For this reason, it is by what? Faith. Faith. In order that it may be in accordance with grace so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only for those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith, who are of the faith, faith, faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. John the Baptist, in John 1, 8, he was not the light, but he came to what? To testify about the light. To counter any false exaltation of John. The Baptist, the apostle John wrote this about him. Look at this. In John 5, 35. John 5, 35. You know, so if you have any misconceptions about John the Baptist, John the apostle clears it up for us. In John chapter 5, verse 35, he says, was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. At first glance, that statement seems to contradict Jesus' statement that John the Baptist, when he says in John 5.35, he says, and he was the lamp that was burning and was shining, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. Well, let, let, let's look at that statement, because I've actually heard this preached, and I was kind of stunned when I heard it. But in John 1, 8, again, he says he was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. Now, there are two different Greek words here. Okay? Now, <clears throat> and just give me a little bit of time here. There are two different Greek words here that are used for the term light. Now, the first term is phos, phos in Greek, which would be P-H-O-S, phos, okay? And, and, and it's used in this passage, and it's, refer, and it's used to refer to Christ. So Christ is the phos. He's the light, Okay. Okay, which refers to the essence. It, 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 you know, it's a word that means the essence of light. It's the substance of light. It's the reason why light exists. Okay? Now, <clears throat> in John 5.35, Jesus described um, John the Baptist as light, but he used a different word. Okay? And, and it's the word lupnos. Lupnos. 
it would be L-U-C-H-N-O-S, Lucnos, L-U-C-H-N-O-S. Now, this is another form, and, and it refers to a, um, a lantern, a portable light, a portable light, okay? That's what he refers to. So he says, in, go, go look at John 5.35. He says, he was the lamp that was burning and was shining, okay? Lucnos. He's, John, Jesus is speaking about John the Baptist. He was the Lucnos. He was the portable lamp. He was the lantern that was shining. And he says, he was the lamp that was burning and he was shining, the, the Lucnos, and you were willing to rejoice for a while. And it's like, you know, sometimes we kind of forget, you know, we're not the Fos, we're the Lucnos. In the New King James Version of that verse, he says, he was burning and sh and he was burning and shining lamp. He was the Lucnos. And you were willing for a time to rejoice. And it's like, in other words, Jesus is the light. John merely reflected it. Jesus was the light. John merely reflected it. Jesus is the light. And the only thing you and I do is to reflect 